Well, last time we left you with a couple things to do, and uh, we had obtained this relationship here for the critical refraction. Uh, we have the critical refraction time equal to 2h over v1 times the cosine of theta critical plus x. This is the source receiver distance minus 2h. Remember, h is the thickness of the layer. We're working with a two-layer problem. And uh, tangent of theta critical over v2. And we posed a problem for you. We said to uh, use Snell's law in this form here for the critical angle, where sine theta critical is equal to v1 over v2, and then determine travel time as a function of h, v1, and v2. In other words, remove these trigonometric functions. And <clears throat> as another hint on how to go about this, we noted that uh, Snell's law in this form for the critical angle, theta c, basically uh, indicates that uh, the side opposite is proportional to v1, the hypotenuse to v2, so this side would be the square root of v2 squared minus uh, v1 squared. So we can use this relationship in order to simplify uh, this equation up here. Now we can see that this equation is linear in x, we have x dependence here. But we have these complicated constant terms in here, and how do those translate into a slope? We, we, we can see fairly easily that this is going to be a straight line. So the first thing you would do would be to simplify the equation by pulling the x term out. So we have both x and 2h tangent of theta critical over v2. So we have x over v2 plus 2h v1 cosine of theta critical minus 2h tangent of theta critical over v2. These are all constants. And we can see that the critical refraction time, uh, sometimes you'll see it as t with a subscript uh, REFR. Sometimes uh, I'll use t crit, c-r-i-t. But we can see that it's a function of x. <coughs> and it has the form of a straight line. So we know that the slope here is 1 over v2. The intercept is rather complicated looking. It's got uh, two terms. We've got uh, the thickness of the layer, the tangent, and the cosine of theta critical, and the two velocities v1 and v2. So the question that you were asked was to um, simplify this equation using Snell's law to eliminate the trigonometric functions. And how did it go? What did you come up with? Well, so just looking at some basic review here, we've got this relationship. Again, it implies that uh, side opposite is proportional to v1, the hypotenuse to v2, side adjacent to the square root of v2 squared minus v1 squared. For this specific angle, theta critical, and we have these relationships for the cosine tangent and the cosecant. Remember the cosecant is just the reciprocal of the sine. So it would just be 1 over the sine or v2 over v1. So in general, uh, just kind of as a refresher, and I know this is something you've seen before, but we can take, if we want to come up with expressions all in terms of the sine or the cosine or the tangent, we can prepare triangles like this where the sine, then the side opposite would simply be equal to the sine, the hypotenuse equal to 1. And that would give us um, the side adjacent as the square root of 1 minus sine squared of theta. And so we could express the cosine, the tangent, and the cosecant in terms of easily in terms of the sine using this uh, triangle over here. But let's come back to this triangle. And notice that, you know, using these, these functions over here for the cosine of theta critical and the tangent of theta critical, we're going to substitute into this expression for the critical refraction. I've got them repeated over here for the tangent and the uh, cosine. We make those substitutions, we end up with a relationship for the travel time, which again, it's easy to see that it's travel time is proportional to x. Uh, 
with a slope, and it's a straight line with a slope of 1 over v2. But then we have this complicated looking um, uh, intersect. So we could also see that there's some similarity in these terms. The, they both, uh, the denominators both share the square root of v2 squared minus v1 squared. We have a v1 over here, so we could add a v2 and a v2 squared over here. We have v2, so we could add a v1. We'd have v1 squared up here. In other words, we could multiply by 1, v1 over v1, and over here we could multiply by 1, v2 over v2. That gives us a common denominator here, v1, v2, times the square root of v2 squared minus v1 squared. We have these two uh, squared velocities up here in the numerators. Uh, we can uh, pull the 2h out, and we end up with this, this expression over here where we have v2 squared minus v1 squared over v1 v2 times the square root of v2 squared minus v1 squared. So the question would be, can you simplify this uh, question, equation a little bit further? And I think you can see that we can take the numer numerator here and uh, divide that up into the square root of v2 squared minus v1 squared times the square root of v2 squared. That does give us v2 squared minus v1 squared. And then we see that we cancel out the square root of v2 squared minus v1 squared in the denominator, leaving us with v1, v2. So that the travel time for the critical refraction is equal to x over v2 plus 2h times the square root of v2 squared minus v1 squared over v1, v2. A straight line, slope 1 over v2, and intercept all these constants here. The uh, two velocities, the thickness of the layer, uh, gives us this uh, intercept, b. So there are a couple additional uh, points to make. Remember that the critical refraction begins at a certain distance from the source. For distances less than that, there is no critical refraction. And this distance, the distance at which you at which you first see the critical refraction, is referred to as x min, the minimum distance. And I wonder, you know, perhaps you had a chance to determine x min. Um, the refraction time intercept uh, here. We the critical this basic formula. But looking at this diagram here, we see that x min must, we have, have only a reflection of it. For angles less than this, we get reflections back to the surface. For points with source receiver distances less than x min. However, at this point where we first begin at the critical angle here, begin to get a, this critical refraction begins when the angle of incidence is equal to theta critical. So, what is x min? Well, we showed earlier that x min was just equal to uh, h, the thickness of the layer, times the tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is just the side opposite over the side adjacent. So this is h times the tangent of theta, and we know that this total distance, x min, is just going to be equal to twice that, 2h tangent theta critical, which would be equal to, using our trigonometric identities, just equal to 2h times v1 over the square root of v2 squared minus v1 squared. Okay, um, so this point of tangency, remember that at this minimum distance, 2a, we have both a reflection event and a critical refraction from that point forward, from that distance forward. And reflection events will still come in uh, below or beneath the um, critical refraction event. And these reflection events are referred to as supercritical, just meaning that they're uh, 
incidence angles are greater than the critical angle. Two layer problem. So this is a simplification, keep that in mind. And as we come back and just kind of summarize things and look at what we've been talking about, uh, we have the uh, critical refraction, the direct arrival, the reflection event, we have this minimum distance. We know that from the direct arrival, the slope of the direct arrival gives us 1 over the velocity and medium 1. We know that the slope of the critical refraction is equal to the reciprocal of velocity and medium 2. So we now have velocities just, just by measuring the slopes of these events that we see in our uh, shot record. We have the velocities in the two media. V1 and V2, just from looking at the uh, slopes of the critical refraction and the direct arrival. Uh, if you can see the minimum offset distance, uh, now that we have the velocities in media 1 and 2, we can calculate h if we can measure x min. So that would be one way to calculate the thickness of the layer, just from this point of tangency. Uh, we also have another point here which is referred to as the crossover point. At this point the direct arrival, and this is for a particular value of x, it's only true at this particular point, x sub c over v1 would be equal to x sub c over v2 plus 2h times the square root of v2 squared minus v1 squared over v1 v2. In other words the direct arrival time, travel time would be equal to the travel time for the critical refraction at this point, the point crossover point, which occurs at this distance from the source. So if, if we can measure this, we already know V1 and V2, we could calculate H again, right? What else can we do? Well, we have also we could extrapolate the critical refraction over to the time axis that would give us the intercept. And again, since we know V1 and V2, we could estimate the thickness of the layer once again. So I think you can see that there are various uh, pieces of information that we can obtain from the data that we, we record in the field. We simply identify the events that we're looking at, the direct arrival, the critical refraction, the reflection event. And we have these relationships uh, that we've developed for the minimum distance, the intercept, the crossover distance, and uh, so on. We know what the, that the slopes provide information as well. So what I'd like for you to do, we've pretty much already answered this question, but for next time, uh, consider what information might be obtained from the crossover point. From the... Uh, point of tangency, and the refraction time intercept. Remember, we, the re critical refraction event does not extend over to the time axis. So this is basically a, an extrapolation rather than an interpolation, an extrapolation over to the time axis in order to get this uh, time intercept. So think about that for next time. Um, Thanks again for joining us and um, hope you'll uh, continue to, uh, to uh, look over these videos.